Video 12 Cloud Security In this video, we'll talk about cloud security. We will start with what is security, what are the kind of security, we will then move on to the cloud security model. We will end with the challenges and advantages of security in the cloud. What is security? Let us talk about the kinds of security. The first kind is physical security. This kind of security makes sure that people cannot get physical access to your servers in your data center. The second is data confidentiality. This means that the data that is meant for certain people is only shown to them. People with proper privileges can access that data. For example, nobody should be able to read your emails except you. Data integrity. So let's say a hacker can't read your data, but he can ruin it so that you can't read it either. If your data is not what it intended to be, then it's a data integrity issue. Next is service availability. So if somebody can bombard your application with so many requests that your application is unavailable and people cannot access it, then that's a service availability issue. Cloud security model. Let's say that you deploy the server on Amazon EC2 and the server gets hacked. Whose fault is it? The cloud security model is a shared security model. Both you and Amazon are both responsible for different part of cloud infrastructure. You are responsible for making sure that your application is secure and Amazon is responsible for making sure that the cloud infrastructure is secure. Let's look at this diagram. Infrastructure security. Infrastructure security. The entire infrastructure on which the cloud services are based has to be secure and this is the cloud provider's job. They have to make sure that your infrastructure is safe. It must not be possible to hack things like the hypervisor layer or the network layer to gain access to your servers. So the bottom layer of security has to be secured by the cloud service provider. The next layer is cloud security controls. Cloud providers has to give you controls to further secure your data and applications. One such control could be firewall around your machine, around your instance. So it will be Amazon responsibility to make sure the firewall is available and impenetrable and your responsibility is to make sure that you only keep the right ports open. If you open up all the ports, then the firewall is useless and you are not taking advantage of the controls given to you by the cloud provider. For example, if you have a web server, you should only keep the port 80 open and close down all of the ports. But if you go ahead and open ports 1 through 65,000, you are making your application less secure. It is the responsibility of cloud provider to provide you with the right controls and your responsibility is to efficiently use them. Application security. Necessary steps should be taken to ensure the application itself is secure. Even if the infrastructure upon which the application is running is secure, if a hacker can get access to your application and through it your infrastructure, then you are accountable for it. It is your responsibility as a user to plug all possible security loopholes in the application. Thus, as you can see, cloud has a shared security model. Cloud infrastructure security. Physical security. Cloud data centers are generally super secure. Companies like Amazon don't release the name of the data centers or where they are located. Even employees working in data center have the company names left blank on their IDs. There are usually many layers of security to protect any unauthorized access to the data center itself. Only authorized people doing maintenance tasks are given access to the floor of the data center for a short period of time. Proper decommissioning of hardware. Cloud providers follow proper industry standards for decommissioning hardware. Amazon, for example, has the process of shredding the hard drives. So the hard drives can come into AWS data centers 
but they only leave shredded. Data access protocols. An AWS engineer knows all Netflix servers are on AWS. What is stopping him from accessing latest movies from there? What is stopping a Facebook employee from viewing personal information of one of the Facebook users? Data access protocols are what stops them. Any access to servers are documented with reasons for access. This company's log any access to the servers and proper documentation has to be done if any of the employees has to access any of this infrastructure. Certifications. So how do we know that the cloud providers have proper data access protocols and are following them? Because a lot of these cloud providers have their infrastructure audited to attend certifications like SOX and HIPAA. This gives us assurance that proper data access protocols are followed. SOX, SOX also known as the Corporate Auditing Accountability and Responsibility Act is a US federal law that sets data storage and access standards for all US public company boards, management and public accounting firms. HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act HIPAA addresses the security and privacy of medical data. Thus, when cloud providers meet the requirements of SOX and or HIPAA, it gives you the confidence that the necessary protocols mandated in these compliances are followed by that given cloud provider. Cloud services security controls. Let us now take a look at various security controls that cloud providers give you to further secure your data and applications. Identity and access management. Identity and access management is concerned with identifying users and controlling their access to services. Most cloud providers allow one to create different groups and users and assign only the necessary privileges to them. This should be used instead of sharing credentials across users. Firewalls around applications, security groups. All cloud applications should be protected by firewalls. In Amazon Cloud, this is called security groups, which blocks all incoming traffic. Users should decide which ports are open to computer or the internet and configure security groups accordingly. Virtual Private Cloud, VPC. Virtual Private Cloud simulates private network isolated infrastructure inside a public cloud. Where additional network layer security is required, VPC can be used. Most cloud providers support this feature. Dedicated instances. Dedicated instances are single tenant servers. That is, they run hardware dedicated to a single customer. Many cloud providers support them and it should be used when required for compliance or for additional security. Server-side encryption. Server-side encryption feature offered by some cloud providers ensures that once data is uploaded, it is encrypted and then stored in the cloud. Thus, data at rest is encrypted. Application security. Application level security is the responsibility of the cloud user. Make sure that all the software installed are up to date and all necessary patching and security updates are done. Take necessary measures for prevention of attacks like SQL injection and cross server crypting. You have to make sure you are using proper authentication APIs. Various third party security tools can be used to further secure applications. It is recommended that penetration testing be done on your application before you launch. There are various third party companies who can perform pen testing for you. Social engineering is when an intruder poses as an authority in your company and manipulates employees into revealing confidential information or data in your system. Necessary precautions should be taken against this. Cloud security analogy. The analogy used here is that of a box maker. The cloud service provider is like the maker of that box. What are the responsibilities of the box maker and that of a customer using the box. The box maker should provide a locking mechanism 
such that the box cannot be opened without the right key. The box itself should be strong and it should not be able to physically break into the box without the key. The responsibility of a user of the box is that he should lock the box. The maker can give the user a locking mechanism but cannot force him to lock the box. It is the user's responsibility to keep the key safe. If someone manages to get a hold of the key and opens the box, it's not the box maker's fault. Cloud security, what more? There's a lot more you can do to further your security in the cloud. Data encryption. You can encrypt your data stored in the cloud or even encrypt the data before you store it into the cloud. Fundamentally, a lot of companies encrypt everything that goes into the cloud. VPN tunnel. You can use a VPN tunnel between your data center and to the cloud to further enhance your security. Audit logs. You can keep audit logs of who in your organization is using the cloud services and periodically this audit logs should be examined to make sure only the proper persons have access to your cloud resources. Challenges. So what are the challenges in the cloud environment? The first one is loss of physical control of data. This is a big challenge mentally to be able to say my data is not here but under protection of someone else. Just 100 years ago uh, when banks were first started people used to think it was crazy for someone to store all their gold in bank locker. Right now you are crazy if you store your gold in your house. This kind of shift will come soon. This mindset where my gold is safer in my house is the same mindset that people have with data. But what they don't realize is that data is better protected in many cases in the cloud compared to their own on-premise infrastructure. Next, you have to have faith in vendor security infrastructure. When storing data in cloud providers like Amazon, Microsoft or Google, you might have some faith in their infrastructure given that they are huge IT companies. But when you have a smaller cloud provider, then you might want to make sure that they are following proper security guidelines and that they have some compliance with some standard protocols. Lack of visibility in third-party audit reports. Audit reports are usually not just pass or fail. We get to know if a company has passed or failed the audit report, but all the corrections suggested in the audit reports are usually not shared by the cloud providers. Companies will tell you that they have passed the audit, but they will not reveal the areas they were told to fix or improve on. Obtain support for investigations. This is another big challenge. Let's say that your system was hacked. If it was your own data center, you can look anywhere. You can look at your server, your router logs, and search for all possible trails. But in a cloud provider like Amazon, Microsoft, all you have is your machine and machine logs. You do not easily get any network level information. You first need to get a support plan and you need to file a ticket to request Amazon or Microsoft to help you with this investigation. Lack of visibility into system architecture. A lot of these cloud providers do not share detailed architecture diagrams with you. So you just have to assume that their infrastructure is secure without actually looking at diagrams. Advantages. Better physical security. It is really hard to match the physical security of some of these cloud providers data centers. Cloud providers like Amazon have five to six layers of security before you can reach any machine. No specific favor to any one entity. Cloud providers usually do not give special super user privileges so there is less chance of someone abusing that privilege. Better auditing for security. Most of the times people don't get their infrastructure audited frequently. Cloud providers have audits done periodically for compliance sake. So you can get the benefit that you are on an infrastructure which is regularly audited. Clouds have consistent APIs across services and regions. For example, take the storage layer in your company. You may have one storage system which is based on something, another storage system which is based on something else. So these systems will be totally different and will have different access controls, loopholes, etc. They are not symmetric. In the cloud, 
for example, simple storage service, there are 3 trillion objects. It is all one big system. It has the same access control framework for each of the 1 trillion objects. So it becomes easier for me to store in the cloud and have my controls the same thing over again and again. For example, an IT guide might configure one machine in which he uses a different firewall software, another one where he uses a different one. But on the cloud, you are all using the same software everywhere. Cloud security is a solvable issue. With proper knowledge and implementation, cloud security is a solvable issue. Cloud security, things to remember. Remember to keep your security credentials safe. If you lose your keys, then someone can use your keys and access your data and applications. Use data encryption when data stored in cloud is sensitive. This is the only real way to protect your data. Many providers offer VPN access to the cloud. So if your applications are super sensitive, you can create a virtual private cloud and access it through a VPN tunnel. Cell screen for security incidents and audit logs. Don't wait until your server dies or is hacked. Perform analysis of logs periodically and see what's going on with your system. Cloud data is subject to the laws of the country where data center is located. When you store your data on American servers, then you are bounded by the laws of that land. USA has a law called the Patriotic Act. Under this law, any data can be scanned and checked by government if they think there is a threat. This is not such a good idea for foreign governments or companies to store data there. Singapore has recently said that they want to become the Switzerland of data. They want to make the data access policies so strong that foreign companies can safely store their data there. In this video, we saw how cloud has a shared security model. It's important to understand cloud security well to secure your infrastructure and applications in the cloud.